Time for sound design. Today I'm going to explore the new effect in Ableton, the saturation and coloration effect called Roar. I haven't played around with this yet, so this is going to be the first time that I'm going to use this. And my idea was to first try some drums. So I loaded up a MIDI track with the DS drum rack, the drum synth from Ableton, comes standard in Ableton, uh, I think from Ableton 11. So those are kind of vanilla sounds, so I'm going to use them and then I'm going to um, uh, first create a basic pattern and then I'm going to see what this new roar effect can do to the sound. So without further ado, let's go to Ableton and do some sound design. So let's first create a pattern. Okay, so now that we have a very basic drum pattern, let's load the roar effect onto this track and see what we can do. So I'm going to uh, audio effects and then here it is roar. Okay, let's start with the drive. So the drive and the tone, it's already, you get massive low end, massive distortion, which is awesome. Let's look at stage one. I think the band pass filter can be really nice. So to have a good amount of coloration in stage one, I put the amount of 40 and then play with the filter, the band pass filter with resonance at 0.60. See if we can find like a sweet spot there. Something like this. That's it's now 832 hertz. So there's a lot of uh, high ends, like the the high ends, the frequencies are cut off, and also some of the bass. I'm just gonna add an LFO to modulate the frequency a little bit, but not too much. So maybe around plus minus 10 percent. and a bit slower rate. So what I did now with the LFO is I just want to change the frequency of the bandpass filter a little bit. So I did plus minus 10%. So it goes a bit around that uh, 700, 800 Hertz uh, point to create a bit of movement in the sound. And the next thing I'm very interested in is the uh, FB mode, the feedback mode in Roar. So that's the next stage. So let's crank up some of the feedback. And you get that nice kind of ringing sound from the feedback. And this button, if you press that, the feedback will, it's a gate. So the feedback will continue when you stop the sound. And that's super nice. So you can turn off the gate and the feedback will continue. So that is something, what if we use that to create sort of a little bit of a break in the beat before it returns to the actual pattern. So let's say we have a four bar, two bar loop, and then, okay, it's a four bar loop. Let's say we have four bar loop, but the fourth bar, we actually don't play any sound. Or we only play on the first beat. And the rest of the bar is empty and we automate the um, gate to be off the first three bars and on on the fourth bar. So let's see how that sounds. So 
So in this way, you can create like a nice sort of bridge uh, section or some kind of uh, variation where you actually don't play any of the sounds, but the feedback still rings out. Now let's adjust some of the settings of the feedback because it's a bit too sharp. So what if we actually turn the frequency down a bit? And also the time. I mean, this is pretty cool. The feedback that you can have a gate and you can sync it to the tempo in different ways or just adjust the time and that you can have it as part of this effect. Um, that's pretty cool. Let's um, load up another drum track, to create another drum rhythm and try something else. Now that we have this basic pattern, let's uh, change the tempo as well, actually. So 122. Let's see what we can do with the roar effect on this drum track. So as you can see here on the routing, there's single, serial, parallel, multiband, mid-side and feedback. So let's use the feedback so we can affect that separately. Um, but first, change the amount and there's also different ways of crushing so maybe let's use the bit crush Let's change the filter to a notch. Or a high pass. Yeah, you have to be careful with the, uh, the resonant frequencies. It can get pretty wild pretty quickly. This is pretty cool. There's the blend between the direct and the feedback. So if you have it at 100% direct, it sounds like this. 100% feedback. And that's maybe like a parameter to automate as well, that you, throughout the four bar loop, you go from the direct to the feedback signal and back. So let's do that. Uh, show automation in new lane, and then basically go from 100% direct to 100% feedback and back. And maybe stay on this for a bit, like this. Let's increase the amount of feedback and the decrease the time.
Let's uh, add an LFO to make the feedback time a bit random. And I put the rate on the quarter notes. Okay, so you can get really wild really quickly. So I'm going to turn the dry wet a bit down. So a bit of dry signal because otherwise it's just complete chaos. So let's put it on like 70. Uh, I can go on for days with this. This uh, effect is really inspiring for sound design. There's so many uh, different things you can adjust and it will take much more time to explore this fully. But already from these two explorations, I can tell you that it is uh, inspiring and you can hear the results. So it's just with a few tweaks, you can get very, turn very basic drum patterns into kind of glitchy, distorted, uh, interesting things. And especially if you start modulating parameters, so they change over time. Uh, I haven't explored the modulation section. There are LFOs in Roar as well. I just used a separate one because it's easy. But there's a lot more stuff you can do with this. So uh, this was just a first look at Roar applying it to two different drum patterns and see what I can come up with. Let me know in the comments what you think of this new effect. Have you used it? On what kind of material have you used it? Uh, on drums or melodic stuff or other stuff? As always, keep making music. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.